So what is it that you can do to make your twin flame so attracted to you that they can't resist anymore? Is it maybe getting a new haircut, going on a diet, working on your fitness, new clothes? Well, most modern dating advice would say that you absolutely need those things. I guarantee that your twin flame is not going to care nearly as much about them as what I'm about to share with you in today's video. Welcome to Inflames and welcome to today's video, which is all about how you can attract your twin flame. And these are tried and true tips because I myself am in union. I've tested them time and time again, what I'm about to share with you. And also through my experience as a certified Ascension coach with my clients, whenever they apply those tips, they immediately experience a shift in their union. Like their twin flame was not talking to them. As soon as they applied some of those tips, boom, a message. And it went further from there. So this shows us that there's something that is very powerful about your inner state versus just your physical appearance when it comes to attracting your one true love, your twin flame. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. What are some shifts that you can make that will make them so attracted to you? And these are shifts that you can start doing even right now. You don't have to wait. And it's not something that requires that you have any equipment or anything like that. You can start even tonight whenever you feel inspired. So tip number one to attract your twin flame is to respect and love yourself. So this one is what a lot of people struggle with. And yesterday we had an amazing live conversation in Twin Flames Universe Open Forum about what it means to value yourself and what it means to value your twin flame union. The conclusion we reached was that you cannot value your twin flame and your union without first valuing yourself because the priority of relationships needs to be correct in order to respect yourself. So first you put your relationship with God or the divine, whichever word you prefer. Then number two is your uh, relationship with yourself. And then number three is your relationship with your twin flame. And number four is everybody else. So that is the appropriate way to prioritize. So if you're putting your twin flame second instead of you know, yourself in this priority, or even worse, making uh, your twin flame your source, like in a way trying to put your relationship with your twin flame first, even before your source of love, who is God, then you're not really valuing or respecting yourself. And this is going to reflect in your union. You'll experience your twin flame not respecting you or not respecting the sanctity of your connection. So what you can do here is to choose to have the correct priorities. You put yourself first always. And this is actually going to make your twin flame so attracted to you because um, there is a sliver of truth in modern dating advice about... Um, like people would say don't appear too available, but they mean it in a way of playing games. In this case, I'm talking about actually taking care of yourself so much that you have so many interesting things to bring to the table afterwards and that you have filled yourself up with your own love. Like you've spent the day doing all sorts of amazing stuff that you love. Maybe you went on a jog, maybe you watched your favorite movie, maybe you did some reading that you wanted to do that you hadn't picked up in a while. And this immediately raises your vibration because you feel good and your twin flame can sense that. And immediately, like, that's when they become attracted to you because you're really putting yourself first here instead of um, staring at your phone all day and being like, okay, when are you going to message me? Are you going to message me now or later? Because you can't hide from your twin flame. There's, um, they can feel it in your energy. So as soon as you shift that attention and focus on yourself, like, okay, what do I need to do now to fill myself up with love and happiness and peace? Then you'll notice a huge shift. And that is something you do every day. It's not something you do once and then that's it. <laughs> it's a lifelong process of learning how to prioritize yourself, of learning to love and respect yourself. So tip number two about how you can super attract your twin flame is to put up boundaries when they are needed. So that might be controversial because don't we all hear about how you should try to keep the peace in relationships and not really rock the boat? But that is so untrue when it comes to your twin flame because, well, first of all, if you don't like their behavior and you don't speak up in this moment, you build up resentment and this resentment will come out one way or another. And this is not something you want to have in your union because it's a heavy energy 
and it's not a healthy way to relate to love or your twin flame. The goal here is to have a healthy, loving relationship with your twin flame. So you do that by speaking up, by putting up boundaries when you need to. And a boundary is not a wall. It doesn't mean that because you have a boundary, you don't receive love. Having a boundary means you don't receive the bad things, but you're also open to the good things. So for example, you don't like the way your twin flame spoke to you that one time. It's okay to communicate that. Hey, I, didn't, I don't like how you spoke to me that time. Uh, this is not how I want you to treat me from now on. And of course, you go within and heal what that showed you, because unlike other people, your twin flame mirrors everything. <laughs> so if there's somewhere where you're not respecting yourself, they will show that to you in such a way. But it's also safe to communicate that because that's also part of the healing, um, not allowing yourself to be mistreated, even by your twin flame. And it's really a way to respect yourself because there is not, there's nothing your twin flame can give to you that you can't give yourself. So you shouldn't accept mistreatment just because you believe your twin flame is your source of something. You don't get to lose in love or peace when you put up a boundary. You actually get to increase the love and peace you already have. And yeah, maybe your twin flame might get upset at the boundary at first, especially if they're not used to it and they're not used to healthy relationships and that's okay. You're not responsible for that. You're only responsible for how you feel and what you do in your reality and how you allow yourself and others to treat you, which is so important. And if you desire to manifest a king, then you must treat yourself like a queen. You know, like attracts like. Tip number three to attract your twin flame is to do what you love as often as possible and to just be in the flow. I spoke a bit about this briefly in tip number one. But that's very important because when you put the focus on yourself, then the next step is to maybe discover what your life purpose is. What do you want to do? How do you like to serve humanity best? How do you, what are your talents? What do you enjoy doing? And all those things are very important. Like um, you don't have to talk with your twin flame 24 seven to be attractive to them. But what you can do is take care of yourself 24 seven. In, whatever way that looks like. Maybe you talk a bit in the evening, but then the rest of the day you do some painting because that's what you love. And I'm sure you've experienced like being in the zone when you're very much doing what you love and you're very dedicated to it in this moment and you're into it. And that's exactly the feeling that you want to be in because that is very attractive to your twin flame. You're enjoying yourself, you're loving yourself, you're feeling your best. And when you feel good, you attract more and more opportunities to feel good more the universe gives you more good feelings. Like, hey, okay, I see you like to feel good and that's what you choose. Okay, here's another thing to feel good about. And this builds momentum. And eventually, as you do that, you'll notice your whole reality is transforming, not just your twin flame union. So that's something important to, to make sure that you do what you enjoy. And even if you're not good at these things, right? You don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. Just the feeling of it. You know, even if it's like the most, I don't know, random painting ever and you just um, do the watercolors in a weird way, as long as you enjoy it and you have fun, there's nothing wrong with that. And having fun is never a waste of time. And of course, there is a work-life balance and all that, but you want to make sure that you bring the most fun possible in every single moment, even the boring ones. And finally, the juiciest and maybe the most shocking tip of all, tip number four, which is to be honest about how you feel and your experience. And that is a very important one because um, it came up in the conversation in the open forum as well about how in many cultures we're taught to not speak our minds or tell white lies about our experience for fear of the other person reacting a certain way or losing our source of something. And that is never true in divine truth. Your true source is God and God would never want you to lie about something or accept mistreatment or hide your true self. You're meant to express your true self because you're created perfect. And being honest about your opinion and your experience is actually very magnetic to your twin flame because at the core, your twin flame desires a healthy relationship with you. And you can't have a healthy relationship with a partner that doesn't think for themselves, doesn't have an opinion, doesn't like, doesn't express that opinion. 
So even if there is going to be a disagreement or whatever, it's okay because disagreements are a normal part of a relationship and it can help you get clear. It can be very healthy, actually, if you use it in a constructive way instead of a destructive way. So a destructive way to deal with a disagreement would be to just take it as an opportunity to be angry at each other and yell at each other. That's not very constructive. But a healthy way to deal with it would be maybe to take some space. Maybe feel what this brings up for you if there's an upset here. Maybe heal something about relationships. And then you come together again and you discuss it. And you get to the truth of it. Who has the next piece here? Okay, like this is my truth, this is your truth. But there is something as an objective truth. So what is it? Maybe it's somewhere in the middle. Maybe one person had a block to it and couldn't see it, but the other did. So it's all about being open and having good communication with each other, which is super attractive. Nobody can deny that. And being honest is a big part of that. And of course, being honest doesn't mean that you will be sharing every single thought you have or try to intentionally hurt the other person because that's just a dick move. Don't do that. (laughs) But it means sharing uh, what you're called to share speaking up when you need to speak up and yeah, not being afraid to disagree or bring something different to the table because even conflict is, well, conflict is what arises when you choose deeper harmony because conflict must be brought to the surface to be healed so you can experience this deeper harmony. And deeper harmony is the point of your twin flame union, constantly going deeper into harmony. So don't be afraid of conflict and don't be afraid of speaking your mind by all means. And if you don't feel like you have the confidence for that, then you can definitely work on that. Like there's so many healing tools you can use. There's the mirror exercise, which is amazing and highly recommended. And also if you struggle with any of the points that we spoke about today, whether it's boundaries or confidence or any of that, then feel free to reach out to me because I can help you with that as a certified Ascension coach. It's what I do. And... Yeah, like this is for you too. You can have your beautiful, healthy twin flame romance. It's all about you claiming it and moving forward with it in love. So this was today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one next week. Have a great week.